One of the things I love about Fusion 360 is how easy you can get cam done on a part. Let's say you aren't an expert machinist or you just wanna get some toolpaths laid down. Take a look. You scroll down to the bottom of your data panel. Everyone has cam samples. I'm gonna double click that, scroll down, and take a look at this hub and jaws part. I've got it open. And it looks like a relatively complex part. Go to setup and I'm just going to click OK. What that's done is it's created a stock. Now you'll need to check it against your stock. Uh, this isn't foolproof, but it's still pretty amazing. So in this case, it's a three inch by three inch by 0.8 inch part. And it's oriented like so, the Y pointed this way, X to the right. Click OK. That just created setup five. I'm gonna right click, create from template. And I'm gonna choose Haas Aluminum. Templates are the key to this. On our Getting Started with Fusion 360 page, we've got a link to a web page where we keep all of our most recent libraries and templates posted, as well as a video on how you can download them and import them into your Fusion 360. My Haas template has a bunch of operations. What I wanna show you today is how we can get this part mostly done with just two operations. So in this case, I'm gonna delete everything except this adaptive and that contour. I'm holding down control as I click these and then I'll hit delete. So we're left with this, it's called a 3D adaptive and a 2D contour. I'm just gonna right click, generate tool path. This is amazing. Now I can already tell this tool, it looks a little bit large for this part. So if we take a look at the simulation, we're still pretty close, but I am gonna reduce that tool to, let's go to a, a 3 8 inch tool. So right click, edit, select your tool, and there happens to be a 3 8 inch tool in this library already. Click OK, OK, go to simulate. I've changed my material to wall paint. It looks a little bit nicer than the green default material. And I'm just gonna click this go to end of toolpath. And if we turn on transparent, we can see approximately what the stock now looks like after it's been machined. So you can see we've got some material left, but nevertheless, the majority of the top side of this part is done with one operation. That is amazing. A couple things we need to do, right click, edit, under the passes tab, by default, Fusion's leaving radial and axial stock. We need to leave radial. I'll talk more about that in a second. But axial here, we can take it to zero. What that means is it's going to machine all the way down to the floor on each one of these faces. And that works because in this template, I've made some adjustments, including this checkbox of flat area detection. How would you know to do that? Well, that's the point of these templates. You don't always have that expertise, and that's what templates can help you spend the time, invest the time in creating a really good toolpath, save it, and reuse it later. So we've made that change, click OK. So why do we have to leave that radial stock? It's because adaptive is a roughing strategy and subject to this tolerance right here, it's going to literally cut corners. That's what allows it to work. It's one reason why optimal load is called optimal load instead of width of cut is it's not always perfect. Again, subject to that tolerance, it's allowed to cut corners or leave material. We won't get into more detail about that. Here's an example. In this 3D adaptive, I've increased that tolerance to a pretty high amount. You would never really leave this much tolerance, 25 thou. But that demonstrates when I simulate and zoom in, you can see what I call faceting. Instead of hugging that curve, it's, it's literally chopping that curve into a series of straight lines. And notice it's never violating the solid model, it's just leaving various amounts of material around it. Again, that's a very exaggerated view, but if you've ever interpolated a circle in any cam package and you've wondered why is it faceted like that, it might be because you are using an adaptive type strategy. So what do we need to do? We need to apply a finishing tool path, and that's often something like this 2D contour. Right click, edit, and all I've got to do is now start picking my geometry Let's simulate that. If I click this go to next operation, it's gonna rapid through all the 3D adaptive work. And now I can hit play and just watch what's happening with this 2D contour. 
By the way, I prefer often to have the mode as tail. It only shows a little bit of the ta trailing toolpath instead of all of the toolpath, which tends to be too noisy. So you can see it's coming through and machining the rest of our part. Two last comments. Is this perfect? Absolutely not. You would probably drill these holes instead of machine them or interpolate them. We've got ch chamfers we'd need to add. Uh, we haven't yet walked all the way around the part to finish up the outside profile. So the point here is not to show what's the perfect toolpath. The point is if you need to get a toolpath laid down quickly uh, or you're new to machining and you want to understand, hey, how can, I, how can I get a part made relatively easily without becoming an expert on all of the numerous various toolpath options? Last thing, let's walk around the outside of that part and clean it up. I'm going to right click on this 2D contour, duplicate, that added a second version of it. Right click, edit. I'll come up here to geometry and I'm gonna click this X to delete all of those existing blue toolpaths. Now, when I hover my mouse over right here, I get a black line, but that's not the toolpath that I'm going to want. I'm still going to click it. You'll notice it turned blue. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that blue line, hold down, and let up. We have this new pop-up here. And what this tells me is I'm in this mode where I'm able to change where that toolpath is. All I have to do is hover my mouse over, and as soon as I cross that line, the selection changes. So when it's in that area I like, I'm going to click once with my left mouse button. And I'm going to do that as I walk around the part. This works, I will be the first to tell you it's not the best workflow and I'd love to see Autodesk improve it, but nevertheless, this is how you do it. So I've updated that toolpath. The black line now walks all the way around the part. Really important, I now have to lock that new selection in by clicking this green plus to accept this current contour. I've now walked all the way around it. Click OK. And we've got a 2D contour toolpath that goes all the way around that part. Thanks for watching, folks.